Welcome to a Legendarium special about Ferdinand I of Naples, the Master of the Black Museum. Ferdinand I of Naples was born sometime during the year 1423 in Valencia, Spain, the illegitimate son of Alfonso V of Aragon and a Neapolitan woman named Geraldona Carlino. Normally, Ferdinand could not expect to become a monarch being an illegitimate son. However, his father's failure to have any more sons ensured that Ferdinand might come into a throne. During his reign, Alfonso V made himself the King of Naples in 1442, when his illegitimate son Ferdinand was 19 years old. Naples, which covered most of southern Italy, had fallen from the peak of her power and prosperity during the 14th century and now came under the rule of a foreign house. Alfonso wanted to prepare Ferdinand to inherit the throne someday, so he invited Ferdinand to live with him in Naples, where he could be trained in his father's work. Alfonso became greatly impressed by his son's courage and intelligence. After just a few months, he made Ferdinand a knight. Ferdinand took classes from several teachers throughout Naples to learn about the many subjects needed for him to take the throne. He did so well in his law lessons that Alfonso named him the president of the Sacro Regio Consiglio, or the royal courts. Just a year later, Ferdinand became the lieutenant general of his father's kingdom. Alfonso grew so pleased with Ferdinand's work that he legitimized him just a few months later and publicly declared him heir to the throne, and Ferdinand gained the title Duke of Calabria, which gave him ever more power within the region. Ferdinand eventually married and became king in the year 1458 at 35 years old. Over his life, he had two wives, three mistresses, and more than half a dozen children, both legitimate and otherwise. Though his father had legitimized him, this did not give Ferdinand the respect of powerful families in southern Italy who wished to claim the throne for themselves. Ferdinand I suppressed the rebellious barons by a series of arrests, trials, confiscations of property, executions, and other delightful things. As he claimed victory after victory over his enemies, Ferdinand became more ruthless. He ordered a museum built to collect the bodies of his defeated enemies. He called this collection the Black Museum, in which he would store his mummified foes to show off to other potential enemies. Throughout his reign, he commanded his servants to embalm his dead enemies after execution and dress them in casual clothes before posing them in the museum as if they still lived. This eerie display unsettled even the most grizzled notables. He especially enjoyed bringing in those he suspected of treason for a tour, which usually prevented them from engaging in any more questionable behavior. Ferdinand finally stamped out the Nobles' Rebellion in 1464, by which time he faced a new threat from the expanding Ottoman Empire. To preserve his throne and his kingdom, Ferdinand only fought wars when certain he would win and retreated when he believed he could not. In August 1480, the Ottoman Turks seized the southern Italian port of Otranto. With financial aid from the city-state of Florence, Ferdinand expelled them only a year later. Ferdinand went on to ally with Florence, and the two fought the War of the Ferrara against Venice, the economic powerhouse of both Italy and Europe. Pope Innocent VIII also declared war on Ferdinand, but made peace only one year later. Despite being a man of great 
courage and real political ability, Ferdinand's method of government proved vicious and often disastrous. He based state finances on oppressive and dishonest monopolies, in which he granted exclusive rights to a certain trade to a notable in exchange for money, and the notable then used their unlimited right to move goods or to mine salt in order to squeeze the people. And yet, Ferdinand's repressive rule also left the barons often restive and angry. Because of the high taxes caused by his wars, the nobles of Naples launched a second rebellion to replace him with Ferdinand's second son, Frederick of Aragon. After two years, Ferdinand invited many of his enemies to a banquet, supposedly to celebrate a peace treaty the two factions recently signed. After the banquet, Ferdinand ordered his guests to be arrested and then fed them to lampreys in the moat. Others he murdered, mummified, and then placed in his infamous museum. It is important to note that Ferdinand shocked even the men of his own bloody age with his behavior, and it displeased few when Ferdinand breathed his last on February 25, 1494, having been king for 36 years. He likely died from colorectal cancer caused by mercury rubbed into his hair to rid the king of lice. For his last request, Ferdinand asked to be embalmed and dressed like one of his mummies. Though not posed in the museum, his servants buried him in a vault underneath St. Dominico Magori Church, along with 30 other mummies of men who lived during the 15th century. Afterwards, his son Ferdinand II, appropriately named, of course, assumed the throne of Naples. At first, Ferdinand II appeared to be a truly popular and even heroic monarch who led the Neapolitans into a series of stunning victories against a French invasion. However, the sudden death of Ferdinand II opened the door to another Spanish usurpation of the Neapolitan throne. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.